Hello everyone, how's it going? It is Tyrnor as always and I'm here with a top whatever list. I really haven't done one of these in a long long while. Uh, this time I'm doing my top 10 past events that I would like to see done in the Caverns of Time. We also haven't had a new Caverns of Time dungeon in a while, come to think of it. But anyway, this list is basically some really interesting past ev past events that, for one reason or another, I would like to see done in the Caverns of Time. Pretty obvious. Now, one of my main criteria is that they're not; those events are not too similar to stuff that is already in the game. Uh, so, for instance, or oh, before Warlords of Drunor, something like the Orcs War against the Drunai would have made the list. But now with Warlords of Genor, we kind of have had that already in game, so that doesn't really count anymore. So, uh, or rather, that uh, it's not something that I would want to see uh, anymore in the Caverns of Time because we kind of already have that. Oh, another thing is that I am not focusing too much on how that specific event would be applied in terms of game mechanics. Uh, for just as an example, if I was to judge an event based uh, just based on how cool uh, the game mechanic uh, it would be applied in game mechanics turns, probably say the Hearth Glen mission in Warcraft 3 would be a good Caverns of Time dungeon because it would be uh, sort of a survive until X, t X time and it would be interesting, but it's not that interesting lore wise, at least in my opinion. Uh, so that's another thing and I'm also going to cheat a little bit on this list the caverns of time are obviously related to as of uh, events in Azeroth history but two of the events on this list are not really are did not happen on Azeroth I am no I'm cheating a bit you, if you want you can just discount them and say oh it's a top 8 list that whatever but I'm doing them on this list on this list anyway um, other than that, always remember that these lists are entirely subjective, it's just stuff that I would personally like to, like to see uh, in a more detail, a detailed manner in the game, rather than what we, what little things or whatever we know, we know of them in the lore already. So yeah, other than that, let's go. Number 10 on this list is the Battle of Grimbato at the climax of the Day of the Dragon novel, uh, which is basically when Alex Straza was freed from the from Dragon Maw enslavement, and then she, along with the other dragon aspects, fought Deathwing. Then the demon the demon soul was destroyed, and their powers re powers returned, and they beat up Deathwing and made him run away. <laughs> uh, why do I want to see this event in particular? Well, because I really like the general idea of the dragon aspects and them working together sort of at their prime at their at the height of their glory so to say and this event this event really showcases them you have this uh, battle going on between the uh, between the aspects in the background with deathwing winning at first and then you, do, you the Ronin destroys the demon soul and the dragon aspects power return returns and they start to beat up Deathwing. But not only that, you have also the stuff that's going on on the ground with uh, at first Deathwing pretty much destroying the dragon maw and then Alexstrasza getting freed, eating Necro Skull Crusher alive and all of this I think would be would be interesting to see in the caverns of time. Now it's not to say something particularly unique since Grim Battle is in the game. The place where the battle took place is also in the game. Deathwing is also in the game. The, the aspects are also in the game, but you rarely see the aspects all together fighting one another in the in the game that as much, especially not at their full glory. So that's why this is on number 10 on my list. Number 9 on my list is something not quite as seen as much in World of Warcraft as the previous one was. It's Azara's con conquest of the Troll Empires back in ancient times before the Sundering, obviously. Now, this is especially interesting for me because I love the Trolls, in, ge in general speaking, and seeing them uh, at the height of their power would be especially aw awesome for me. And I also like the idea of the ancient Knight of Empire and seeing it at the height of its power conquering the trolls would also be especially especially interesting for me. 
and also we don't really know that much about this particular event battle series of battles whatever it may have been we know that the knight elves won because of their magic as it happened in the troll wars uh, but we also know we also know that many lower fought, fought alongside the trolls and it was basically a really spectacular a spectacular battle really showcasing the might of both of these civilizations and uh, i like i said i really like both the ancient night elves and the ancient ancient and modern trolls not that much difference between the ancient and modern trolls now that i think about it and i would like to see them at their prime fighting one fighting one another not much more need be said oh and also i like to see an event w uh, where ajara is sort of the good guy leader kind of sort of maybe i guess <laughs> anyway moving on number eight on my list is the summoning of ragnaros at the end of the war of the free hammers or rather i should say the final battle at the of the war of the free hammers why is this on the list well because i really like uh Dwar dwarves fighting i guess you could say namely how it's done in, in world of warcraft and that they are a very technologically advanced race and i would like to see uh, the technologically advanced dark irons and bronze beards and the more wild wild hammer dwarves going going at it that's ba that's basically my reason my reason for this for this being on this list I like how technologically advanced the dwarves are, and I'd like to and I'd like to see them fight. I guess, and also Ragnaros is cool, as you can probably guess for yourself. And I would also like to see some of the more famous, well, famous, uh, important dwarf characters in the lore: Sorcerer Fane, For Forasan, the Bronzebeard and Wildhammer Fanes whose statues are at the entrance of uh, Syrian Gorge into Loch Modan and so on and so forth. In my opinion, it would be a really interesting event. Number 7 on my list is the imprisonment of Yogg Saron. Now, why Yogg Saron in particular, not say Khufu or Nazaf or the death of Yasharaj for that matter? Well, because out of uh, the three alive old gods, namely himself, Kafun, and Azoth, Yogg's, the imprisonment of Yogg Saron was described as the most difficult event uh, battle of the war between the Titan Forge and the old gods. Uh, as to why not the death of Yashraj, well, because uh, Amon Fool intervened in order to kill Yashraj, while he did not intervene directly well, in the battle against Yogg Saron. And the, and the battle of Yig against the Oxaron, out of all the battles of uh, between the ancient keepers and the Black Empire, is again described as the most difficult battle won an incredible, an incredibly pyrrhic victory that was achieved with great sacrifice on the on the fa bleh, behalf of the Titan Forged, and it. I also want to see it because. Well, for one thing, it would allow us to see part of the Black Empire at its height, although we're probably going to get that in the future, but anyway. And it will also allow us to see some of the Titan Forged at, the, at their respective height, more or less. And it will, also allow, it will also be a much more interesting and desperate struggle again than the imprisonment of Kafun or Nazoth. And it would also not be as one-sided and then followed by a sort of deus ex machina as Yashraj's imprisonment was. Also, Yogg-Saron is my favorite old god, so there you go. Again, this list is subjective, what do you expect? <laughs> Let's move on. Number 6 on my list is an event usually described in uh, Warcraft lore before Chronicle came out, that is as Aegwyn and the Dragon Hunt, namely in short, when uh, an avatar, when Sargeras manifested on Azeroth via an avatar and began hunting dragons in Northrend, and then Aegwyn, the Guardian, teamed up with some with the dragon aspects and defeated Sargeras' avatar, only uh, for Sargeras' spirit to uh, go in go inside Aegwyn and then uh, manipulate Aegwyn into having a son, whom Sargeras then possessed. That son being Medivh. Now, why this event in particular? Well, 
because once again it showcases the po the power of the of the dragon flights. So like I said, that's uh, something that I particularly like. But it also showcases the power that of a guardian, and also showcases the power the power of the burning legion. So win win wins all win wins all around. It's also described both in the last Guardian novel and in the World of Warcraft Chronicle as a particularly epic duel from multiple points of view. Uh, Aegwyn basically wins by turning the avatar of Sargeras into stone, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, there's also a little bit uh, some interesting stuff in that Aegwyn initially planned to use the staff Aloneth to fight Sargeras, but Aloneth refused to do it, so she had to rely on the staff Atiesh. There's lots of little interesting moments I would also like to see maybe if they are going to represent the fact that Sargeras sort of inf infiltrated I, I'm not sure what a better word for that is infiltrated Aegwyn uh, in the last Guardian novel it's described that Aegwyn had two shadows that would be in that would be an interesting hint to see, hint to see in the game uh, also the petrification of the avatar of Sargeras itself would be interesting oh no it would be an epic fight and a very Interesting again th thing to see in World of Warcraft. Number five on my list is a more obscure event and the first one of those that is that did not happen on Azeroth. Namely, it's the Burning Legion's conquest of the Aldorachi. Now, for those of you who don't play Demon Hunters or do not know that, partic that particular piece of lore, basically the Aldorachi were an alien race that the Burning Legion conquered and uh, the the tanking demon hunter i don't know the, the the demon hunter spec sorry the tanking demon hunter artifact weapon is called the aldorachi, aldorachi warblades they are the warblades of the aldorachi leader and the aldorachi are well we have no information on uh, what uh, i don't have a picture to show to put on the screen to show what they looked like but the aldorachi basically wore uh, this in militaristic race that m almost managed to resist the Burning Legion. It took Sargeras himself intervening to kill their leader in order to finally defeat the Aldorachi. Uh, it's described as this society basically of badasses, for lack of a, be of a better term, who managed to keep the Burning Legion not so much at bay, but really put up an incredibly tough fight. And... I think it was an entire, a really big missed opportunity that they were not present in uh, 7.3 uh, in the Argus patch, namely as part, some of them as part of the Army of the Light, and namely because before 7.3 came out, the Army of the Light was described as being composed of uh, various races of the universe who opposed the Burning Legion, and the Aldorachi would have been an obvious choice to include some of their number in that army. But uh, with 7.3, no, they're just 90% Draenei, which is a bit of a disappointment, honestly. But yeah, the Aldorachi, the race of badasses that managed to uh, resist the Burning Legion until Sargeras himself had to intervene. And there's so, there's so little is known about them that I don't even have a picture to throw up on the screen of them. So yeah, the Aldorachi, the conquest of the Aldorachi by the Burning Legion is number five. Number four on my list is the Akir and Troll War. Now, this is on the list much for the same reason that the um, that Queen Ajara's conquest of the Trolls is on this list. Namely, because I love the ancient Trolls. Only instead of the ancient Night Elves, now we have the Akir. And the Akir are a race that I would have long loved to see in World of Warcraft. We only see their descendants presently. And also because this conflict is... Another one that is gigantic in ma in magnitude. Again, it's described in uh, the World of Warcraft Chronicle as involving most of, or most if not all of the Loa in uh, in Zandalar. It involved all of the troll tribes. It also involved all of the remaining Akir after the ordering of Azeroth, and they were led by uh, Kafrax. Well, we find out later that there were multiple Kafrax, but that's beside the point. Basically, in short, it's an epic conflict that also involves ancient trolls, and we'd also get to see the ancient, the ancient Akir. Uh, so yeah, I, again, subjective list. <laughs> Let's move on. Number three on my list is the War of the Spider, which is on my list, based, namely because 
I would really, really love to see the ancient Nerub, well, the ancient, the old Nerubian civilization at its height, which, well, the Nerubians were one of the races that managed to resist the plague of undeath, so the Lich King had to fall onto age a direct all-out war on them, and it would be a more difficult war to represent in the caverns of time because it was mostly a war of attrition between the Nerubians and the Scourge. Uh, I guess the caverns of time could be sort of say the death of a Nubarak or some sort of final stand kind of thing or, or whatever else. But still, um, it's basically in, on this list because I would really love to see the old Nerubian society at, at its respective height. And also I'd love to see, say, a Nubarak before he died or other important Nerubians and see much more of how they would have uh, behaved as a people because we really don't have much inclination of how they were as a people beforehand. But, so yeah. Again, subjective list is subjective, but I think more people than, than otherwise would agree that they would have loved to see the old Nerubian society. Number two on my list is an event that again did not take place on Azeroth, which is the fall of the Apexis society, or really I guess it would be either it or the destruction of the Spore Mount Allah. Now let me explain, the Apexis are in short uh, the, an ancient Arako society that I think I could accurately describe as one of the most advanced societies in all of Warcraft's history, probably with the, uh, with the only ones more advanced than it being the uh, ancient Eredar or maybe the Mechanomes or, what, or whatever else. The Apex, the Apex is again, the, were this ancient Arakoa society, they were described as the sort of golden age of the Arakoa, and they basically uh, built a super weapon that was so strong that it could destroy a spore mound in one single blast. Now what is a spore mound, you may, you may ask? A spore mound is one of the um, primordial entities of, Jun of Junor uh, that basically, it, re it required a titan to intervene uh, and create a gigantic stone creature in order to defeat the ancient spore mounds. And the Apex has managed to build a weapon that could that could destroy it in one single blast instantaneously. <laughs> I, that weapon would definitely have come in handy lots of times, too bad it was destroyed about 1200 years ago. Which is the reason I would really like to see it in World of Warcraft. Now, the destruction of this weapon because basically of civil conflict within uh, Apex's society is what created the Spires of Iraq. The Spires of Iraq was originally just a gigantic mountain named Iraq, but when this weapon was destroyed it, it exploded and created the Spires of Iraq, multiple spires. Uh, it is, again, it's an incredibly adva advanced society that I would have loved to see at its height. It also differed uh, somewhat from, say, the higher Akoa you see in Warlords of Junor, in that the higher Akoa only worshipped the sun, while the Apexis had the balance of the shadow and the sun. Uh, well, balance. It's the reason why the civil, con well, the civil conflict I mentioned broke out. But still, it's this incredibly adva advanced society that I would really love to see, and I really love the Arakoa in general, so again, subjective, li subjective list is subjective. And maybe I, maybe, I don't know, we're going to find a pretext to bring the ancient breath of Rukmar into our times to, I don't know, defeat a Void Lord or something. I bet it could do that. Anyway, we can move on. Number one on my list is the Battle of Blackrock Spire from the Second War, which might come as a bit of a surprise to, to some given that I've been uh, previously a critic of the faction war storyline as, as it is done in World of Warcraft. Well, in my opinion, the faction war in Warcraft 2 and, well, not so much Warcraft 2, but rather the f future retellings of Warcraft 2 in the Tides of Darkness novel and in the World of Warcraft Chronicle are in my opinion how you do a faction war right <laughs> i guess you could i guess you could say and the battle of black rock spire is a, a, something very iconic in warcraft lore it's a place where heroics took place on both sides you have doomhammer killing anduin lothar for the horde and then you have turalyon rallying the alliance and defeating doomhammer for the alliance <laughs> and uh, you also have all of these various old school things that are 
really awesome and in my opinion really nostalgic cool for me you have the old horde with its old death knights the ogre mages and and such versus the old the old alliance with high high elves and uh, Lo and the kingdom of lordran and and so on and so forth basically it's sort of a nostalgia nostalgia fest and I think it better. It's a better faction war than uh, the one that we, pre we than we currently have in Battle for Azeroth, and and Miss of Pandaria for that matter. If I'm being entirely honest, and it also allows us to see again iconic characters: Doomhammer, Turalyon, and and Duin Lothar. You could also take in game mechanics into account, which I said I would not do, but I'm making a bit of an exception for this one. You could make it uh, differ between the factions, like uh, the, the Battle of the Tsar Lord does currently. Namely, you would have the Horde fighting alongside well, the Horde and the Alliance fighting alongside the Alliance. <laughs> Uh, it would be again a very inter a very interesting event event to see because of all the old horde and old alliance factors and all the heroics and all of the old important characters and such. And this brings us to the end of this particular top whatever list. Leave any thoughts in the comments below and remember this list is obviously entirely subjective. I, I would honestly really like to see what past events uh, in Warcraft's history. Maybe that did not necessarily happen on Azeroth as I have done with this list. You would like to see it done in the Caverns of Time or in any other way in World of Warcraft for that matter. Other than that, thank you once again for watching and I will see you all next time. Farewell.